Sorry, Devi. Hello, everybody. It's good to see everybody here tonight. Um, looks like things are starting to warm up, although I still see a few people that appear to be in the chilly part of the world. Um, I'm going to be sharing my screen now, and we will commence with our next part. Uh, and I'm going to shrink me down so that I can get me out of the way over here. Right, we are continuing through our body and our sign language from Jim McAfee's book. And tonight we are doing, we've, we've gone, I think, from, from the toes. Now we're going up to the head. Uh, so tonight we're doing the brain and the nerves, which is our onboard computer system. And probably the greatest and best supercomputer in the world, in your very own body. Disorders of the brain and nerves are among the most pervasive of all health conditions in the USA. And in my opinion, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more now with this horrible, silly pandemic thing. And the way that people are stressed because of all the scary news out there and lockdowns and one day you lock down, then you're not locked down and you're then told that if you go out in the wild world, you're going to get a virus and die. And it's, it affects people. There's a lot of people, um, I see it through casualty where there's a lot more attempted suicides, specifically from younger people. And I think depression is playing a big role at the moment because people are scared witless, especially if you're not medically minded and don't understand what's happening. And you know, if you think about the school kids who they're at school and they're not at school, then there's lockdown and then they're back at school. And there's, there's so much stuff out there that it is definitely playing a role in affecting our brains and our emotions. And going back to that first point, this is indicated by the prescriptions to treat depression among adults and attention deficit among children. Probably the teachers would understand this more where they're seeing a lot more ADD and ADHD, which is your attention deficit and attention deficit hyper, hyperactivity disorder. This was pretty much unheard of back when we were at school. And for those who are older than me on here, back when you were at school, I'm pretty sure the word attention deficit disorder had never, ever, ever been invented. There were those that didn't concentrate, but AD was an unknown. And now it is a very much known. The brain is an energy hog and it consumes 25% of the glucose used by the entire body even though it consists of only about 2% of the body's weight. Those mathematicians can do the maths. This little thing inside here, your supercomputer, it needs a lot of glucose. Where do we find glucose? In sugar. The brain also consumes about 20% of the body's oxygen. Quite an intensive thing. That's possibly why the brain is very close to the nose, to get the most amount of oxygen in the body. Proper vitamin and mineral intake is essential for the ongoing energy production of brain cells because there's a lot of turnover and a lot of energy being used over there. B-complex vitamins are particularly important for this energy generation. And going back through the whole body, as we've seen over the past weeks, your B-complex vitamins play a major role in a lot of areas, your digestion, your detoxification, and now we're seeing it in energy production for the brain. Not only are the brain's energy demands extraordinary, but the raw materials necessary for construction of healthy brain cells simply are not present in the poor quality diets many people choose to eat. As you've seen, there is food that we eat, and there is proper nutrition. Now, diet is 
what you eat. Nutrition is what your body absorbs. And there is a big difference between those two things. Over 60% of the brain cell structure is fat. Hence the term fathead. According to Dr. Michael Schmidt, who is a professor of biochemistry and clinical nutrition, the brain requires specific fats of specific size, length, shape, and function in order to conduct its daily business. If it's not getting them, we are going to have a problem with focus, concentration, depression, etc. A great many of the fats in the SAD diet, which is the standard American diet, have been sufficiently altered that they form unsatisfactory building materials for healthy, well-functioning brain cells. Remember, junk foods are, consist of a lot of fat and a lot of sugar. But sadly enough, those fats have been processed virtually to death and are not sufficient for what we need. These dietary fats are often rancid or oxidized because they have been subjected to high temperatures or allowed to spoil due to careless handling. Think of a fast food joint. Where do they store their stuff? How do they store it? How do they process things? I think if you went behind the scenes, you would find some very, very scary stories happening over there. The standard American diet is heavily weighted to omega-6 fats, and these promote inflammation and blood clotting. Remember, you get your omega-6, which is inflammatory, and you get your omega-3, which is anti-inflammatory. The primary building blocks of brain cells are phospholipids, and these are found in whole grains, legumes, and DHA, which is a fat supplied by cold water fish. Does this start to ring a bell? DHA has been shown to improve eyesight and IQ in infants. This is why it is crucial to have omega-3 in a new mom's diet from before conception to way past birth. And I'm being eyeballed right now by a little person who is standing up staring at me. And I know she's got very good eyesight because her mom has been on omega-3 at my insistence from the time I found out right through to, to date. Deficiency of either phospholipids or DHA force the body to build brain and nerve cells from inferior materials that may not be sufficient to withstand the psychological and physical stress many of us encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. And you can think of the fairy tale of the three pigs. One built their house with straw, didn't last very long. The one that built his house with bricks lasted significantly longer. And if you think about, look around us, the squatter camps are made out of cardboard and tin and whatever other loose stuff, junk material happens to be lying around. Now think of what happens in those areas when you have a windstorm or a heavy rainstorm. Those shacks don't last very long, whereas a well-built house with a good foundation will um, survive through most storms. Because fats are prone to oxidation, rich sources of antioxidants, which is found in food and supplements, are essential to prevent brain fats from oxidizing. Remember again, oxidization is rust. When your car oxidizes, you need to have it fixed. My, my car is undergoing that right now. When our bodies oxidize, they end up with diseases. So one of those disorders that we've talked about now is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And there are two different types. There's the, just the attention deficit disorder, which by the way, is not exclusive to children. It is also found in adults. And then there's the attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, which I think is becoming a lot more common these days and can be a lot more possibly intimidating, certainly distracting. Um, and some of the things are forgetfulness, carelessness, risky behavior, 
children are taking chances, excessive talking, etc. And ADHD, by definition, is difficulty paying attention or controlling behavior. And you'll find these kids are, they sit there and they, they're touching and they, they're looking at things and they, they're fiddling the whole time. They can't sit still. Now, there's a difference between a child who can sit and watch a TV program and be engrossed in that TV program for 20, 30 minutes to a child that's not paying attention to a lesson in school where he's focused for 30 seconds and then he's fiddling and carrying on, there might be other problems. So it might not just be ADHD. And sadly enough, ADHD is too easily diagnosed. It actually should be diagnosed by a team of medical professionals, not just your school teacher or your local GP. The National Institute of Mental Health estimates about one in 20 children suffer from ADHD and subsequently often placed on potent medications with many undesirable side effects. And sadly enough, it's too easy to have a child diagnosed with ADHD and immediately put them on drugs. And I do understand from a teacher's perspective, and Jenny might bear me out on this one. When you have a class full of children who are being children, they are going to be restless and it can be quite difficult to control them. And especially if you're teaching a boring lesson or for not Jenny, but the, the boring educators out there, we all know them, where it's hard to focus. It's way too easy to diagnose those children as being ADHD. And I think my personal opinion, it's a lot easier to teach a class of 40 zombies who are on drugs than it is to teach a class of 40 active children. I would not like to be a teacher at all. Likely contributors to ADHD include common pollutants, think of lead in the air, and poor diets that poison or fail to properly nourish brain and nerve cells. Um, and pollutants, if I think about our local high school in Port Shepston, it's right next to a main road through town. Every vehicle coming into Port Shepston drives right past that high school. There's trucks, there's cars, there's new cars, there's old cars pushing out lots of smoke. There is a lot of pollutants. So we might not be an industrial area, but there's still a lot of pollutants in the air right next to that high school. So I think it could be quite common to see ADHD coming or being diagnosed in the high school children. The mechanism by which many pesticides kill insects is through powerful activation of the nerves, making them fire repeatedly like a machine gun. Remember, nerves turn on and turn off. And if you've ever looked at a, we'll go back to the old mechanics, and a, a timing light, you push that and the engine turns over, you can see that flashing light or a strobe light. That is pretty much how our nerves work. And sometimes those, those nerves work too much. And instead of flashing on and off in an orderly manner, they go, which can cause a lot of problems. Fluoride can damage an area of the brain called the hippocampus, which plays an important role in memory and emotions. There's some funny names in the brain and in the body, but don't worry about what the fancy terms are. Just know that fluoride, which is found where? Toothpaste can cause a problem in the brain and can lead to ADHD-like symptoms. There was an even stronger association between hair lead levels and physician-diagnosed ADHD. And basically what they did was they took a lot of children who were showing signs of ADHD, took a sample of hair. So they cut a little piece of hair and they tested that. And those that had extremely high 
lead levels also had ADHD signs and symptoms. High sugar intake disables the protective mechanisms against excitotoxins in brain cells. More big words, don't stress about it, but excitotoxins, think of excite, once again, causing the nerves to fire repeatedly, rapidly, and toxin, obviously meaning poison. So sugar is a poison to the brain, even though the brain needs the sucrose. Children should never be given an adult serving of sugar. Their body size is smaller and cannot cope. And I know um, Don Lawson had a very good description of that, and it's in his book for those of us from the Eagle team who have got that book. And he likens it, he takes an adult man and a child of say around about 10, and he gives the child a square of chocolate or two squares of chocolate, whereas the adult man has taken four squares of chocolate. So he thinks, oh, well, he's a child, so you only give him half the amount. But he also forgets that the child is less than half his weight. So those two squares of chocolate in a child is equivalent to about eight squares of chocolate in an adult. Way too much sugar. So the suggestions, do not overindulge children in sweets. So be very careful about children continuously eating sweets. Not only can it lead to diabetes, but it can also lead to ADHD. And obviously sugar is extremely addictive, so one's got to be very careful. How often have you seen school kids walking around with their hand in a packet of chips or having a pie or other junk food? Um, next to my office in town, there's a little takeaway cafe. And for me, it is actually very sad and scary to see the amount of junk food that these kids consume on a daily basis. Reduce exposure to toxic substances, including pesticides, heavy metals, and food additives. Very difficult, but one of the ways that we can do that in our own homes is to watch the cleaning products that we're using. And for those in school, Educate the teachers about what cleaning products to use. Good market for you to, to, to introduce them to Super 10 and LVC instead of Mr. Min and all, and all sorts of other stuff that they use <clears throat> sorry, in the classroom to clean the boards and the desks and various other things. Obviously, you, one can't always control the air pollution, but try and reduce it and make plans and check out what the child is exposed to, specifically food-wise. There's a lot of heavy metal toxins out there in pesticides, in batteries, in, as we'll get to it later, cell phones, etc. So just be aware. And then you need to supplement with essential brain building and sustaining nutrients, including phospholipids, we know that term quite well by now, omega-3 oils, we know that one quite well by now, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Does this combination sound familiar to you? Any idea where we would find it? Right there in ProVitality. That is the core nutrition that every single person on this planet should be having. In a children, they can get the equivalent from Liquivite or Vita Squares and Vita Guard. But they, most children over the age of about eight should easily be able to swallow all of the capsules in a ProVitality pack. Now for the older people, just checking my time over here, the thing called Alzheimer's disease, or otherwise known as old timers disease, which consists of memory loss and confusion. And this is a little diagram over here of the difference between a healthy brain and somebody with severe Alzheimer's. Very, very scary. More sad, I think, for the family because the person tends to forget who the family is. They're not concerned themselves because they don't even know who they are. But the family has lost that person in front of them. 
Those with Alzheimer's are a tremendous burden to caretakers and a tremendous cost, both in finance and lost productivity, and I would say emotionally as well. Because generally, they're actually pretty healthy. It's just their brain has atrophied and it has become a problem. So they need constant care. It's almost as bad as having a toddler because they don't know what they're doing, but they're a lot bigger and older. So they can be quite, quite a lot stronger, which is where it becomes a problem with a caretaker. Research shows that low levels of mercury exposure can cause the kind of damage to brain neurons, fancy term, neurofibula, neurofibrillar tangles, and we, that we see in Alzheimer's disease. Other metals, including aluminum, did not cause this kind of damage to nerve cells in the study. Mercury is one of the most toxic mineral uh, metals out there, and scarily enough, is found in a lot of areas. Mercury is found in amalgams in the teeth, so those with fillings have them checked. Some fish, because there's a lot of mercury and other heavy metals in the, in the sea, polluted air, and in the preservative timorosol that is often added to vaccines. I was trying to do some research on the current most well-known vaccines, which is obviously the uh, corona vaccine. And I cannot see anything that talks about timorosol there, but the, this substance is found in a lot of other vaccines. So if you have to have a vaccine, please ask the person administering it for a list of all of the ingredients. And if they are not prepared to produce it, refuse that vaccine until you can find out what is in it. That's just my opinion, by the way, not medical advice. Unfortunately, patients are rarely tested for sensitivities to vaccines or medications before they are administered. If anybody has had the latest uh, vaccine, uh, the corona vaccine, were you questioned beforehand on any sensitivities that you might have or any underlying conditions that you might have before they administered it? I haven't had the vaccine, so I can't answer that one. But if you know somebody who has, ask them. Aluminium is toxic to nerves and brain cells. And it is also another very common metal found in all sorts of common areas that even I didn't realize they were all there. Aluminium is commonly found in baking powder and antacids, amongst other things. Aluminium is also found in a lot of deodorants. And the skin under the arm is extremely sensitive. You rub or spray your antiperspirant in there, that aluminium is going straight through, and it is one of the few heavy metals that can actually cross the blood-brain barrier. Toxins are found all over the place, and toxins create free radicals which attack cells. Um, Glutathione and antioxidants protect cells. So again, we need to protect the brain. Electromagnetic radiation, or EMF, may also be a risk for Alzheimer's. Where do we find that? Cell phones, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. All of those things emit EMF. If you live near a, a set of power lines, you're at much greater risk. Occupations with a high degree of exposure to EMF have four times more risk for developing Alzheimer's disease than those who are unexposed to powerful EMF. Another um, place that emits EMF is your microwave oven. So be careful about standing too close to one for too long. This study was conducted prior to the widespread popularity of computers and cell phones. So imagine if it was done BC and it was four times the greater risk, how much, much, how much more risk are we today where there are an incredible number of cell phone towers all over the place? And yes, we are exposed to those rays, whether we 
have a cell phone to our head or not. It's still in the air, it's radio waves. And Wi-Fi, we are exposed to that. So this is a scary thought, and I don't know if new research has been done at this stage. Several antioxidants reduce risk of Alzheimer's or improve the condition. So once again, a suggestion, if you can't prevent your risk, protect yourself against the risk. Among the most powerful antioxidants are vitamin E, ginkgo biloba, alpha lipoic acid, N-acetylcysteine, and vitamin D. Moderate to, to severe deficiencies of vitamin D are found in 80% of those with Alzheimer's. Lack of vitamin D is also one of the more common reasons for people to have the worst outcomes with the coronavirus as well. So those with the lowest vitamin D levels have the biggest problems. Time to improve the vitamin D intake. The most important and most abundant antioxidant in the human body is glutathia. Um, N-acetylcysteine, vitamin C, and ALA, or alpha lipoic acid, all enhance activity or production of this antioxidant. So while you might not have it in your diet, these other um, substances will go a long way to helping to create it. Foods that boost your glutathione production include things like asparagus, garlic, broccoli, spinach, eggs, milk, and avocado. The energy of the brain cell is derived from glucose, which is why low blood sugar has a devastating effect upon brain function and long-term brain health. So again, diabetics end up with problems. Children with ADHD or who are regularly undergoing sugar spikes will end up with problems later on. A few nutrients, including D-complex and magnesium, are essential to produce energy from blood sugar, while lead, mercury, aluminum, and pesticides do much of their damage by interfering with cellular energy generation. So if you can't prevent it, protect it. And I think before I get into this next section, I'm going to stop around about there. We have about eight minutes left. So, if, and I'm going to stop sharing now. So if anybody has any uh, experience with ADD, ADHD, or Alzheimer's, do you know of somebody with the problem? Um, have you got a relative or a friend who's experienced the problem? Um, how have you been able to handle it? Please unmute yourself. And I just mentioned <clears throat> my youngest daughter. Mm -hmm. I've got two daughters that are OTs. The youngest one works in Durban. She's got her own practice. And um, she works with children. Um, yeah, basically primary school children. And she has had quite a few testimonies and reports on um, one, one specific was a very good one, a child that had autism and mm -hmm. was using like the children's program and omega-3. I can't remember about the mind enhancer, but there was a great improvement in this child. She I actually have the testimony somewhere. And then other children with ADHD, lack of concentration, et cetera, she has the success. The only challenge with her, is she's very hesitant to share because she thinks it's unethical. She's an yeah. OT and she doesn't want to share her products, whatever. So she must do it in a roundabout way. She's got very much out of it lately. I can identify because I've got to do exactly the same thing because otherwise yeah, we yeah. can be uh, accused of operating outside our scope of practice because technically that is a nutritionist's job or a dietitian's job, not yeah. an OT or an orthodist. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, but anyways, I just wanted to mention <clears throat> that there, I don't know about other people, can't think of somebody now, um, that that she has seen the results and she's told me and mm. I was excited. <laughs> I always encouraged her to tell the people, I said, tell your mom and whatever I'll service him, but it's quite, you know, she's quite far out and so yeah. on. I thought she's so busy and with this COVID thing, uh, she's got big challenges with the COVID, the school, yeah, you know, to send children to her practice, etc., etc. So, 
Yeah, I haven't spoken about that for a long time, but she, but the the bottom line is the products help children like that. Very they different. Really, Very different. This one with the autism is a difficult one. Yeah, that I'll be and getting into in the next section. Sorry. I'll get into autism in the next section. That's the next part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, of course, you didn't <laughs> speak of it. I see it coming up, and I thought, no, no, don't rush it. Please, you want to listen. <laughs> John, you wanted to comment? I have no, friends. No, no. I have friends yes, who have autism uh, children as well. Okay. John? Hmm. Yeah, uh, Kim and Neil Thompson in our downline, they, her mother uh, couldn't remember their names from one day to the other. Uh, in, it was actually in, in Kew. In Westville, mm. and she put her, her on quite a, a strong mind enhancement two in the morning, two in the afternoon. Mm. And she made the, the actual uh, nurse oh. make sure she took the, the uh, mind enhancement. Mm. And within 14 days, her mother could remember when uh, the visits were there, the children, and she was looking after a pet and could feed it throughout the day. So the mind enhancement, uh, that didn't cure it, it but managed her, uh, to get those uh, violent uh, connectors firing again. Correct, and it worked brilliantly. And part of the reason for that is because it contains ginkgo biloba. And that ginkgo okay. works brilliantly. Okay. Yeah, um, they actually gave her a, a bird so that she can remember to feed it. So okay. they were working, she was on a lot of products. She was on Omega, she was on a lot of products. Um, but it was the mind enhancement that they found that made mm. so much difference to her. Yeah, and some people it works very quickly and some people, I, I remember listening to one story on a podcast where this lady had had, oh, she'd had massive, massive, massive medical issues. Um, and her, she's got an incredible story. I'll find it again sometime. But part of that was she lost her memory to a certain extent. And she was always, she was misplacing things and she was forgetting to feed her, her children, never mind anything else. And it took eight months of regular use of mind enhancement before she said it was like clicking a switch where suddenly yeah. things kicked in and she's been fine ever since. Wow. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, also, I heard that exercise is also good for the brain. Yes. Very true. Yes. The things. Exercise is good for all sorts of things because it gets your blood supply moving. And obviously, your brain needs a lot of blood supply as well. So that's why when you sit and you, you sort of vegetate, for want of any better term, or you're focusing a lot, you're not, the circulation isn't there. So your blood, the blood isn't circulating and you're losing out on the oxygen levels that the brain is so desperate for. Mm, makes sense. Mm. And it sure. also helps with di digestion mm, exercises. Does. Definitely. Sean, yes. uh, what can we do for Parkinson's? Uh, that's a, another difficult one. Um, zinc is very, very good for that because Parkinson's okay. affects the nerves as well. So I would do vitamin B and zinc. Uh, would make B a very big difference to that. What about vitamin E? Vitamin, vitamin E what? is a very good antioxidant, um, but because of, of the Parkinson's, how it affects the nerves itself, you want, to re you want to rebuild those. So vitamin E is always a good idea as an antioxidant. Um, because it's obviously but the main ones are what? The main ones, if you had to not give it to, uh, too much of it up, uh, but my ex, my old doctor, is an old, old friend, he's got, just told me the other day he's got Parkinson's. I mean, I'm blown. No, no. no he was sick. I would put and, him on zinc and B. Zinc and B. Okay, yeah. I'll tell him. All right. Thank and you. probably two uh, men as well. It doesn't help her, Sean? It will help because it's an anti-inflammatory, but I'm just thinking maybe the uh, tree and N for absorption would help with absorption with the, with the zinc and the, and the B as well. Just to speed up okay. that whole right. yeah. um, protocol. Okay. B and zinc. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, but, uh, hang on. Parkinson's affects the, the, the brain as well, but it's more does, it affects a whole lot of other things, but mm -hmm. a lot of brain as well. So is that what you're going for? Is it yes. going to be, it's going to help just with the brain or is it going to help with anything else? What about no. the shaking and whatever? It, that helps more with the shaking than anything else. So Parkinson's is more of a shaking disease. Alzheimer's is yeah. more the brain. 
No, I know that. That I know. But I mean, the, the vitamins there, the supplements are the B and the, and the zinc. Are they going to help the brain only? Or are they going to help the shaking as they're well? Gonna, what do we no, do? For, the, for, they're going to help the nervous system. system. So they'll help with no, the okay. shaking. Hmm. Uh, okay. Gal, Gal and, makes you help the shaking. Yes. Gal and if we, well. if, the, if the mind, if the mind needs something, what's the, the zinc will help as well for the mind. Yeah, yeah, Otherwise, really I can mention brain. mind enhancement. Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. So before before vitamin E, B, zinc, and trianine, and then man enhancement probably to help concentrate and all that. Correct. Okay. Thank you.